Because pandas data frames are designed for and optimized for vectorized operations, we typically do not need to iterate through the rows of a data frame. However, there are certain circumstances where this is necessary. For example, if there is some kind of a delay or multiple operations that must be performed on a row before going to the next one, then sometimes it makes sense to iterate through the rows one at a time. In this example, we want to check whether websites are working or not. And in our data frame, we have information about each of the websites that we want to check, its name and its URL. Let's create the website data frame. In order to check whether these websites are working, we need to perform an HTTP call to the server, and that's going to take some time. So we will iterate through each row send an HTTP request to the server, and when that response comes back, we'll process it and then move on to the next row in the table. The way that we accomplish this is with a method called iterRows. iterRows creates an iterable item from the data frame. The items that are produced when we iterate through each item in this iterable is a tuple with the first part of the tuple being the label index for the row, and the second part of the tuple being a series that represents the values in that row using the column labels as the labels for the series. If we iterate through this table, let's see what we get. Here is the first tuple with the label for the first row, and then the series that includes the data in the first row. This is a little bit difficult to understand because we're viewing it as a tuple. Alternatively, we can unpack the tuple like this and separate out the label index and the series that is generated for each row. So if we run this loop, it's a little clearer that we get the label index and the series. As we go through each of the rows, we can pull information out of the series. One way to pull the information from the series is to use loc and to pass in the label for the item in the series that we want. As we saw in the lesson on series, we can reference an item in the series by direct indexing when we pass the label for the item in the series into the square brackets. So if we carry out this loop, we see that we get the same result regardless of if we use loc or if we don't. We are now in a position to check out what's going on with each website. We're going to use a library called Requests, which allows us to make an HTTP request. The request that we're going to make is a GET request, and to do so, we will send the URL of each of the series as we iterate through them. That will produce a response. One of the attributes of the response is the status code an integer that indicates whether the attempt to retrieve the URL was successful or not. A 200 was successful and a 404 is not. Let's try running this code. We see that the two real URLs, Google and Vanderbilt, got 200s and it printed that the status was good. The fake URL got a 404 response and it printed out that it was down. Another thing that I did was to replace the value of status with a new status depending on what happened in the loop. OK, not found, or other. If I print out the data frame, I can see what the statuses were. OK for the first two and not found for the fake URL.